What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy, and this is X-Men 97, Episode 7. This one's called Bright Eyes. Uh, you might notice I'm not in my uh, usual studio. Uh, it's because we're in L.A. Sorry if the sound is a little echoey. Uh, I have a sheet here trying to bounce some of the sound, but there's only so much I can do in this era. B and b But for now, we're going to watch this episode. Let's get this up. And if you want that full-length reaction, go to patreon.com slash nerdy nightly. Uh, I'll be back in the studio for episode eight. See you then. Oh, I need to pay attention to these. Wolverine's in it, Morph's in it. How'd everyone like the uh, Deadpool Wolverine trailer? Cassandra Nova's in that. She's not in this show. That's weird, right? Well, at least she isn't yet. Maybe she's later. Let's go. I'm assuming this is the episode where we get back to what the fuck happened in Genosha, right? I really hope it is. <laughs> I'm losing my fucking mind. I need to know. Oh, we're just skipping. Oh, shit. A sinner beyond saving. Such was the cards, he'd say. I love the connection to Nightcrawler's religious background here. It's brilliant. To see how his sins had made him into a hero. Oh, Kerr. Was Gambit's. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Rogue's going full scorched earth. You are trespassing. Cease and <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, Rogue! If you've only seen the X-Men movies, you might be like, wow, Rogue's fucking on it. And yeah, she is. What do we do, sir? Ross! Hey, man, need I remind you that- How fun. Our intruder is an unhinged mutant from the swamp. She ain't no- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Daddy always used to- Say breaking into prison was easier than breaking out. <laughs> I know it seems strange, but after losing Storm, the thought of having something of a sister was comforting. Did Madeline die? How? For every mutant still out there who's watching these images, they need hope. Genosha nightmare, fuck. And let's go remind the world that times like these are when dreaming matters most. Does the professor come back at the end of this episode? Is that the like big final moment? Everyone wants to be a survivor, but when you actually see one fresh off the belt, a survivor is the last thing I'd want to be. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stand down, Rogue. Hogwash and tell me what America's top cop is doing all the way out here. Like you, I'm hoping to use Gyrick to get our hands on Bolivar Trask. He built the Sentinels. He's the natural first suspect for that master mold in Genosha. Interesting. I can't believe Cap is here. Black Book, so secret. They love telling you about it, huh? No, these sorts don't talk, ever. This is an interesting team up. If anyone outside the X-Men could convince Rogue about a right way to do something, it's Cap, right? Like, fuck, this show's brilliant. My hands are tied. Well, if your hands are tied, you won't be needing this. I mean, 
like she's just minorly inconvenienced him. Stop pressuring me, Jubes. Look what happens when we don't hide. When we shove it in their face. Is it worth it, Jubilee? <sighs> oh, fuck. Don't want them burying a stranger. Will you come with me? Duh. This show is definitely not woke and definitely not at all about the experience of being queer. <laughs> nope, not even a little bit. No queer experiences in this show. <laughs> Honey, this ain't that sort of pro. <sighs> oh, rogue. lost so many paths unfinished lacking closure God, i'm so glad i'm not a telepath <laughs> a second mutation it's a dormant mutation triggered by duress <coughs> i've always done well <coughs> under pressure <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Good joke. Oh, Scott, I'm sorry. Come see the horrifying face of your future. To review. <laughs> to review. <laughs> Literally his fault, i.e. we can't trust him. I love Morph. Is Stranger Days. Buckle up, team. All right, here we go. This episode's fucking, every episode of the show is fucking crazy. You got this, okay? We go in, charm with small talk, and... My, I'm a mutant. Screw <laughs> <laughs> <Hear> that. <laughs> Good cut. What? This is such a relief. <laughs> and do you truly think your father and I believe a band of Somali pirates hijacked your yacht in the Hamptons? <laughs> And you Hold would on. be one of the X-Men, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. I was afraid he'd be facing this all alone. Mama. We'll have to discuss some new rules concerning your associations. And how to be more discreet. Spritzers? It was almost beautiful. Almost. You sure pulled the short straw in the adopted sister department, didn't you? Got the gal who goes bonkers over losing a boy. And her confusion is only natural. But she did not cause Gambit or Magneto to be killed. Fuck, why is this show fucking getting me so much? Ah! <laughs> They were like, what if we just made X-Men the saddest show on television? They were like, we gotta go to Madripoor, but we really need Rogue for this. We can't miss out on one of our heaviest hitters. <laughs> okay. Okay! I love that Madripoor is just like, definitely not Tokyo. They're never out of diet. Uber secret break room behind a busted vending machine. Mm. That seems, that seems like people would just accidentally get into this place a lot, right? Like people drink diet soda. <laughs> Lots of people drink diet soda. <laughs> not ringing any bells from my spy days. Maybe we ask poor man's Oppenheimer before he... I made the Sentinels to protect normal people. Now I am become dead. 
Did he hear the Oppenheimer reference? He's like, oh fuck, what did Oppenheimer say? Worse than what we saw in Genosha. The technology in these cases is light years ahead of ours today. Shit, it's coming from the future. I, I have nothing. Same, sugar. Oh fuck, Rogue! Vogue, what have you done? What we all wanted to do. <laughs> Is this who we are now? That rotten piece of scum put a good man, my man, Terminate! Oh, fuck! <laughs> I don't like it! Oh, God! <laughs> Let's go, Kurt! Okay! Oh, wow. Take him down. Seriously, did he just go Quicksilver? Let's go. God, Morpheus, everybody. <gasps> oh, fuck. Oh, you. This show is fucking insane. Tell me, Orphan, how does it feel to be abandoned by the future? Charles. Charles with alien technology, come on. It's his son! Nathan. Let's skip the reunion, Dad. Trask got it wrong. Sinister's working for someone else, someone worse. And if you- Someone worse? Magneto's still alive. Simply listen and obey. See, you were born for this. Black. Oh man. I knew I knew when they did this episode it would like get me. I just knew it, right? Because it is it is that like the, the tragedy is bad. The tragedy is always bad, but there is something about watching the people who lost everything in that tragedy try and cope with it that is more relatable in a weird way, right? Like, I don't know what it feels like to be in the middle of that situation, but I do know the aftermath. I can relate so hard to that because since I was fucking seven years, <laughs> nine years old, right, and 9-11 happened, I... Uh, and all of us, it's not like a unique thing to me, it's our society now, is the last 20 whatever years have been filled with these moments and with school shootings and Pulse, obviously, which Bo DeMeo, the creator of the show, brought up in his inspiration for the show. And, you know, I, I think that this is a show that is so uniquely from a gay perspective and I, I, I can see those fingerprints across all of it, across the way that Sunspot's coming out scene went the the sort of I, I like how they play that right I really like that she accepts that he's a mutant and she still loves him but that because they are wealthy and because their lives are lived based on shareholder interest that that isn't enough right that isn't enough to go fully public because the the love of her his mother does not supersede their family wealth and the desire to maintain that I thought that scene was great I I'm so like intrigued that they brought in the second mutations from the comics. Magneto still being alive is really fascinating because like how? <laughs> but but like maybe Leech is still alive. I would love that. Um, and just Rogue, right? This whole episode is just about Rogue. It is truly at rock bottom, and it's so fascinating that the whole episode it's Remy, 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 Remy. That's all she says, and like I'm. She loves Magneto in a way, right? Like the, there is a genuine feeling there, but it's it's losing Remy that truly devastates her. And I just think that that is, it is it is the most human thing to connect to, is that loss and just how how driven you can be by loss. 
towards the person that you've always said you didn't want to be, right? Like, I think that might be the only time I've ever seen Rogue in the show. I, and maybe it happens in the, in the original animated show. I haven't gone back and rewatched it recently, but where she takes off her gloves and intentionally puts her hands on somebody without any fear whatsoever, right? Like, that is, that is Rogue's lowest that she can get. And... God... And she does it here. And then the thing that pulls her out is the X-Men, right? It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. But it's also just such tragedy. And I wasn't ready for that. The show makes me cry a lot. God damn it. <laughs> um, I really like the scene between Scott and the president, too. I, I think that, you know, comic Scott gets really militaristic, you know, at a certain point. And... I, I think that this show is doing such a good job through the dialogue with him of showing the path ahead for him, right? The, the risk. Because, because Rogue isn't a leader. So when she goes off the deep end, when she hits rock bottom and she goes like full on, I'm going to throw Captain America's shield into the mountain so that he has to go find it, which is so petty and I love it. Um, <laughs> I... It is it is a personal thing, but when Scott goes rogue, it, when Scott hits rock bottom, when he goes down that darker path, it, it it is like a magnet pulling everything with him, right? Because he just has that sort of, A, trust with the X-Men around him, but also just that kind of presence and that reputation worldwide. He is one of the faces of the X-Men, one of the first five. But Logan, also one of the first five, never really wanted to be a leader, and Gene... Gene has been through so much and has been like manipulated and, and there's there's so many elements to Gene that make her not that leader character because she's so powerful that she needs to be doing her own thing at times. Scott has always been sort of the center. Obviously Beast is um the scientist. He's he's you know, he's in the front line when he needs to be, but he's not trying to lead it, right? Scott is that guy. And when he hits rock bottom, it 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 drags so many people with him as you know the comics have shown over and over again and this show is building to that in a really honest way that's really working for me right I, I see the trajectory and I also like empathize with the trajectory and I sometimes feel like comic Scott because because of the switching writers and because writers kind of want to like get to what they want to get to you sometimes feel the swing of Scott towards being the more militaristic asshole version of him a little too hard and a little too fast and sometimes it doesn't feel earned, but that version of Scott makes sense. It's just about how you get there that I think the comics don't always nail. And this to me is really getting into why he's getting there in a way that I feel is really honest and, and is really working for me. And if we do see that version of Scott in the show, which we may or may not, you know, they might also do the story where, you know, Gene or somebody else pulls him back from that brink. Or, or maybe it's this, right? Maybe it's seeing Rogue drop Bolivar Trask that pulls him back from the brink seeing his future, seeing the thing he's headed towards that he doesn't really, deep down, he doesn't want to be that. The world is just sort of pulling him towards that and he he, he wants to push back. And I, I think that if they do go either direction, I think that the show's laying the groundwork for it to make sense and feel earned. And I love that. Everything about this show feels earned. I am surprised Storm didn't show up this episode. I was expecting her, but but we don't really know how long the life death thing took, so... Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming next week we get Charles back and Storm back. I'm assuming it's going to be sort of a reunion because next week's eight because this was seven, right? So next week will be eight and then a big two-part finale. There will be like sort of the reunion episode and then the big two-part we got to fight all the super sentinels. That's just going to be crazy. Uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below because the algorithm god is hungry and we must feed her. This episode, that algorithm goddess is Emma Frost. Congrats. Double mutation. You fucking did it. Also, Rogue, you were amazing. Uh, if you want to follow me around the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. And as always, do something nerdy tonight.